Now that we've understood the importance of the name attribute, let's go ahead and fracture some geometry. In Houdini, we have many ways of fracturing geometry, and without a doubt, one of the most important ones is the Voronoi fracture. And in my opinion, one of the fastest and most stable ways to fracture geometry. Let's start with a simple exercise before jumping into more complex geometry. First of all, I will control click on the sphere tool, dive into its node, and I will also change the primitive type to polygon. I will also increase the frequency to 20, just to have a little bit more resolution. Now I will tap and type Voronoi fracture to lay down a Voronoi node, and I will connect it to the sphere. Now, if you notice and click here on the Voronoi Fracture visibility icon, the sphere will disappear and we get an error. So if you click here on the error symbol, you'll notice that there's a text saying not enough sources specified. So the Voronoi Fracture is expecting points to generate individual cells. So these points we need to input into the node. And there's many ways of generating points. The easiest and fastest way is to use the scatter node. So I'm going to connect a scatter node just below the sphere. For now, I will reduce the total count to, let's say, 100 and connect the scatter node into the second input of the Voronoi fracture. Now, if you look close enough, we have generated new divisions. And if we connect an exploded view node, you will notice how now for every single point that we generated with a scatter node, we have a new piece from the Voronoi fracture. And as I mentioned before, you can generate these points in any way you want. In this case, I'm using a scatter, and by default, the scatter node will generate points only on the surface of the input geometry. If you take a look at the points that were generated with this scatter, they are only lying on the outer surface of the sphere, which is fine, but sometimes you will want to create interior detail when you're dealing with very thick geometry, for example, a very thick wall or perhaps a collapsing floor or bridge. To generate interior points, we can create a volume and use that volume to scatter the points. So let me add some space here and I will lay down an ISO offset node which will generate a standard volume and I will increase the resolution or the sampling divisions to 60 just to have a better contour or a volume that better resembles my original sphere. Now if we connect the ISO offset to the scatter. Notice how we will also have points inside the volume. So the scatter node, when detecting a volume, it will use the density of this volume to scatter the points within it. So now if we take a look at the resulting pieces, you will notice how we have interior pieces that will look much more natural when creating destruction. Now, as mentioned before, every fracturing technique has its pros and cons. In case of the Voronoi fracture, it is a very fast tool and it can easily generate many, many pieces. It also has the advantage of being able to handle almost any type of geometry, even open geometry, for example, planes or concave geometry. On the other hand, 
the greatest disadvantage of the Voronoi fracture is that it has these very distinctive cell patterns. So if you take a close look at the individual pieces, they look almost like crystals or with very geometric shapes. And there are many ways to address this and to alleviate these problems that we will see in future videos. For now, just consider that Voronoi fracture will be your main fracturing tool.